one thing, um, if you guys don't mind me going off on a tangent of something that I think is really important uh, for us in these days of trying to do a whole lot more, so doing online and in person, and probably having a lot less volunteers, you know, because of the season that we're in, there's some people who aren't ready to come back and serve, or we've lost people from our churches or organizations because we talked about X or Y subject, or we uh, stated some sort of stance on X or Y subject, uh, and we lost some people from our teams. Uh, we're trying to do more with less, right, uh, is a, a common thing that churches are trying to do. And the thing that I keep coming back to and that ProPresenter integrates with is this guy, a stream deck. So if you're not familiar oh, yeah. with stream decks, man, these things are Get on it. The, the tool to end all tools these days. Um, I, I don't want to like put that much value on it, but it's pretty amazing. So a stream deck, if you're not familiar with them, and I, I don't know, have you guys talked about these in the past uh, on the podcast before? We haven't, but we are familiar with we them. We have not. Okay. Yeah. So yes. uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, stream decks were created uh, by Elgato for gamers to be able to do their gaming live streams and made it easy to like switch scenes inside OBS uh, streaming software and encoder, um, you know, and like press play on video clips or start or stop Spotify or do different things so that you could produce a gaming live stream, you know, um, as one person. Uh, but a awesome group of, uh, I think, Swedes uh, at bitfocus.io created this program called Companion. And Companion works with Stream Decks and allows you to control production gear with your Stream Deck. And so you can control all sorts of different production gear, including ProPresenter and ATEM switchers and the X32 and videos and TV sets and projectors. And you can mm -hmm. send MIDI notes and you can do all sorts of stuff all from this device. And you can stack those actions together to do some really, really impressive things. So like this current screen that I have here is set up for my, and I think we're doing video, right? So this yeah. current screen is set up for my yes. video switcher. So I got a row of preview buttons and I got a row of program buttons to switch between my eight inputs on my video switcher. Instead of spending, you know, the, what is it? $2,000 or $3,000 for the ATEM control panel for a video switcher. Uh, the Stream Deck XL is 250 bucks, and I have a hardware controller that can do everything that the ATEM can controller can do except for a T-bar. That's the only thing that's missing, and most mm -hmm. churches don't need to use a T-bar. Let's just be honest. That is, you know, manual fade transitions are not a super common task, and we probably could all get away with not, not doing those. Um, yeah. And, and you can and you can do way more than that. So uh, you, on this, the XL has 32 buttons on it, but you actually have 99 pages of 32 buttons on the XL. Uh, they have the regular one has 15 buttons, and then they have a little small one that's got six buttons. Um, and so, like, I have an action uh, that I'll just walk you through, and this is where it gets really super fun. So I have a a button that when you press it. Uh, it fades out uh, playback music in the house. So we have like house playback music coming through Spotify. And then we have online music that is playing through ProPresenter. So this is uh, like copy, copyright free music for our live stream so we don't get in any, any trouble before, the, before our gathering starts that's playing back to online. So that's different music for online than in person. So we got two different sources playing back on our soundboard. And so when I press a button on the Stream Deck, it's gonna fade out both of those for me automatically on the X32. It actually can move my faders for me and do an automated fade on the X32 over time, uh, which is the only one of the only ways that you can actually do that sort of thing. You can't even do that on the X32 by itself. And so using this, you can actually automate your faders to fade in and fade out over time, which is pretty incredible. So I'm, I'm fading mm -hmm. those out. And when they fade down, it stops the audio in Spotify and in ProPresenter. And all of that is on a different computer. That's sweet. So, so my sound guy is pressing that button. Yeah. It's fading those down, stopping those. And then it's pulling up a new scene on my X32. It's telling my fake waves rack on my main stage setup to go to the right <laughs> scene with the right auto tuning key. And it's starting tracks for our band all in one button press. 
and it's doing that all perfectly in time. So it's fade out, quick snap to new scene, start these things all right in line. You're never gonna have like, I went too fast and my pro presenter person didn't hit pause on whatever they were supposed to hit pause on or this other thing didn't get switched. It all works perfectly together and one person controls multiple things all at the same time. So it's really, really incredible. You can do the same thing with video. So you could have your pro presenter operator press a button that fades out your house lights, switches your ATEM to show the video input, and then turns the faders up on the soundboard to the right level and then plays a video clip mm -hmm. and does all of that within milliseconds so that you can press one button and it controls all the different things. So one person is control in control of that transition instead of trying to organize like, okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, sure. one, two, sure. three, let's go, you know. Yeah. Um, or you or you need comm, right? So you need yep. a whole comm system. Even right. going over comms, you still have to count it out and say, is exactly. everybody ready to go? Exactly. And this kind of puts the power of what, what we're trying to do in our production environment is we're trying to put the power of the position in that person's hands, even if they don't have direct control of it. So my audio guy now has full control over all audio things, even if it's not all on the, the soundboard. So if it's on somebody's computer, mm -hmm. um, they have control of that. You know, they have control of that yeah. on somebody else's computer. My video guy has control of video stuff that he needs that might be different than what my pro presenter operator does. So my video guy doing video switching can hit a button to pull up lower third titles inside pro presenter that are just for the live stream without ever having to bother my pro presenter operator. So That's they can great. just press a button and it just does that in pro presenter automatically for us. So we're just trying to put the power of the position in their hands. So we run three different yeah. stream decks, uh, one's at pro presenter position, one's at video switching and one's at audio. That's really, really cool. The other thing people don't think about is, um, power sequencing like we're beginning a project at central where the guys want to incorporate stream deck into a, a classroom and do some of those functions that you're talking about but you know anything ip related um like middle atlantic makes power strip sequencers now that are ip controlled oh they've been doing it for a while but um you could install one of those in your rack and trigger your whole power sequencing of your av system with one of those with the stream deck so we're with yeah. Stream Deck, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 this is the first I've heard of Stream Deck. So of course I'm the I'm the guy that doesn't get all this stuff all the time. But all I can picture is Eric, our worship leader, on stage with one of those things, another piece screwed onto <laughs> his mic stand, starting the whole service. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric, if you watch this, I'm telling you right now, you ain't getting one of these on stage. It ain't happening. <laughs> Guess what? He can do it from his phone because they yeah, have oh, yeah. a phone interface. So you don't even have to have hardware to do it. Is it hacked into your, your yeah. system? Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. So, and like, uh, like Michael was saying, like it, this is all controlling gear that has to be uh, connected to the network. So it's sending network commands yeah. to all of these different pieces of video gear. But when you start adding things, like if you add in a, um, like a smart hub, like a smart video hub, where you have all of your video lines for all of your screens around a building and you can send any signal to any screen in your whole building. And you have, let's say, 10 inputs and you have 40 outputs, you know, or even 10 outputs that you can press a button and say, I want outputs one, two, and three to be this and three, five, six, and seven to be this. And you can do that super easily with one button press to change all of that stuff. It's really, really powerful. Um, we just switched over yeah. to a different lighting program just so that we could control lighting over the network so that I could do that from anywhere as well. And like you said, we're doing a remodel in our kids' classroom right now, which is super cool and I'm super excited about it. And the whole thing's going to be controlled by a stream deck. So we're going to control the, the screen in the room is now a big 75-inch TV instead of a projector. And we'll be able yeah. to control the volume of, of the all of the stuff that's in that, which will control the volume of the stuff in the room. We'll be able to switch video inputs on the TV itself, and we'll be able to control ProPresenter, which is one of the video inputs on that TV, all from a, a stream deck installed into a wall, basically as a wall panel. So like a little wall. It's pretty incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. That is great. I think it's important to note too that that does have to run on a PC, right? 
Uh, it can run or on that Mac? Mac or Linux, and it actually can run okay. on a Raspberry but it does... Pi. Really? Yeah, I was going to say you can you can have a little tiny uh, PC. Yeah, it, I mean it, that. it has to run on a computer, so it doesn't hook directly into the network. Um, okay. But what computer you use is basically anything. So you can use Mac, PC, anything. Linux. Yeah. There is a version that runs on Raspberry Pi. So there are some people who created a, a little custom box that is like a Stream Deck and a Raspberry Pi underneath it. And then you plug in an Ethernet cable and it powers the whole thing over Ethernet. And uh, you just have this box with one Ethernet cable plugged into it. And that's your whole control surface, uh, which is pretty incredible. So. That's cool. Well, thank, thanks for sharing that for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think yeah, and the I'm, old guys go, not one more thing. Another on thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and here's, the, here's the fun thing about it. So um, is companions free and you can test it without buying the hardware. So okay. you don't have to buy a stream deck to play with companion. And so you can go download companion and go see like, does any of my gear actually work with it that I have in my church? You know, like, okay, we have pro presenter and I know I can control pro presenter and you can do some really cool stuff when you're controlling pro presenter with it. Um, you know, cause I can actually trigger like video files and different things in the background that my um, operator never has to worry about. So I could actually, uh, a couple weeks ago, we uh, played a video um of a person playing keys at home who was in quarantine on a screen on our stage um and then our pro presenter operator was still just running lyrics but that video file that was synced up to our tracks and all of that kind of stuff was on this other tv and my audio person was able to hit play on that video file and the tracks um with a stream deck and that was all kind of done in the background on the mac uh running pro presenter which was really cool but you can test all of this out for free and um you don't have to worry about like and just see if any of it's beneficial and if it's like you know what i don't i don't see how this could really help out our use case then don't worry about it um but especially if you're using atem switchers and pro presenter um those two things i to me are a like a real good indicator of that it would be useful for your church um, because spending the money on an, a true a time control surface is to me just kind of a waste most of the time because why would i spend two thousand dollars on a control surface that can only control one piece of gear when i could spend 250 on something that could control that piece of gear plus all sorts of other stuff yeah right <laughs> so what's the programming like pretty fairly simple yeah, it's really, I mean, you basically like create a button and then you can create commands for the button press or the button release. So you can turn it into kind of a toggle button, like a mute where you have a function that happens when you press it down and when you press it again, when it releases. Um, but then you just give it commands and all there's all of these modules for all your different pieces of hardware. So, okay, so the modules are all pre-written. Yep. So there's modules for, all, but some of the modules are just like a MIDI module that just sends out MIDI notes. Mm. So any program or anything that can receive MIDI, you can then control with it and you can send whatever MIDI note to whatever MIDI channel you want at whatever MIDI velocity you want uh, when you press that button. So uh, you can actually, you know, like I could use a stream deck to play main stage and like actually play a piano and like play a chord with a button. So if I wanted to like trigger chords <laughs> from the sound booth to play pad under my uh, teacher talking, you know, at the right. end of the message, right. I could do that with a stream deck if you really want. <laughs> um, but, you know, some of them are, you know, some of them are limited to like all this does is, you know, like for my Teradek video, which is my hardware uh, video encoder that we use for live streaming, all it does is start stream, start record, stop stream, and stop record. Those are the only four functions that that module does, but that's still better than me going down and pressing the record buttons on that little tiny box. And instead I have a button on my stream deck that just says start stream and I just press it and it starts streaming. Right. Um, so it just kind of depends on what the module is, but you add the modules in and then you just add commands from the module and choose what commands you want and you can stack multiple commands together or you can uh just use one command on a button so cool yeah right on. yeah man thanks for sharing that i know that michael's been working on a few projects with the stream deck um and uh so I'm, i i love that you brought that up um we've been looking at one for the church that i go to as well 
Um, because yeah, when you have the, the ability to do so much with just that one thing, it's just priceless, man. I just feel like if you have that in your workflow, it makes things easier for your volunteers too to yes. wrap their minds around, especially if they're not very tech savvy, just hit this button and it'll take care of it, you know? Um, yeah. but right now at the church that I go to, when we're like, uh, right before we go into the message, we do like community time where people like are talking. And so we have Spotify going, but you have to like fade out Spotify before you hit play in pro presenter on the sermon bumper. Right. So because the audio is coming from the yep. same source. So that feature within itself to be able to just fade out Spotify before you hit that bumper. That's, pr that's amazing. to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do this. We do the. Yeah. Or we used to do the same thing. We called it life together, uh, and that happened in the middle of our gatherings where we just had this like coffee break. And again, like you said, those transitions are really tough to get right. Of like, okay, I got to fade, fade this down. Okay, hit pause. Okay, got to push, put this yeah. back up. Okay, yeah. hit play. Yeah. And to be able to not have to do all of those commands, but be able to just like hit a button that does all of that together is really powerful. Now, I will say, like, not every module can do that. So the X thirty two module has it built in that it can move your faders and do that automated fade. Um, and that might be in a beta release of the of Companion right now. I don't know that that's actually in the official release, but you can download the beta ones and they're very stable. Um, but that might, it kind of depends on what your soundboard is and, you know, is that functionality built into the module for your soundboard or is your soundboard even, you know, available? So Capable that's why it's it, worth right. just checking out ahead of time. But... Well, that's awesome, man. Well, thanks for so much for sharing.